Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Jacqueline McCullough coming to you, talking to you, spending time with you, and reminding you that Christ is in the crisis. This is week 23. Can you imagine 23 weeks? But we're still here together. We're still standing. I'd like to talk to you today about the steadfast love of the Lord. We talked in week 22 from Lamentations 3.22. Now we're going to Lamentations 3.23, but I think we should read the 22nd and the 23rd verse together. So get your Bibles or however you can get the information and let's read together Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Here begins the reading of God's word. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now we talked the last time about Jeremiah being terribly, terribly concerned and, and somewhat in despair about the impending doom that was coming upon his nation. And he was concerned about his people. And when he shifted his prayer of lament, and we talked about lament meaning a poem of woes, an expression of cries and wailings, he shifted it with a declaration. And the declaration we just read, but I'd like to concentrate, as I said, on verse 23. The mercies and the compassion that we talked about, there's something specific about them in the 23rd verse. But let's look at where we are right now. We're facing several challenges that have grown out of the pandemic. Some schools and colleges are opening while others are not. Parents and students are worrying about safety and health issues. During the school year, the election coming up and the re-evaluation of our democratic government have created grave concerns and apprehension. What to expect? What decisions should we make? how to make necessary adjustments, how to keep moving forward. These are just some of the questions that believers and unbelievers perhaps have on their minds. This exhortation comes to help us deal with vexing issues and hopefully lift our faith to receive help from the Lord. As I said, the text in verse 22 declares that we are not totally destroyed. That's what the phrase, we're not consumed, if you remember. It means our present circumstances feel like it's destroying us. It may even look like it's destroying us, but we're not totally destroyed. This verse, verse 23, further underpins the fact that we're not ill-equipped to handle whatever comes our way. No, you're not ill-equipped. I know you're feeling down and out, perhaps. Maybe you feel as if you can't make it, you've dropped arms. But if you are a believer, you're not ill-equipped to go through. It is not due to our ingenuity or our strength that we are making it through. We're not going through because we have it all together or we find skillful ways of getting through, getting around. No, it is due, as verse 22 says, through the mercy, grace, favor, and loving kindness that the Lord has extended to us. The first clause of verse 23 talks about time. And time 
is one of your highest commodity. The time that we have right now, we'll never have this time again. Prayerfully, we'll have a time similar, but we won't have this time again. So the, the verse is talking about what happens at a certain time. It's not, it's not whether we will receive these graces that the Lord has for us or, or will he give it to us. That's settled. He gives us grace, favor, and mercy. That's why we're not totally destroyed. So the issue is not whether we're receiving it. Do we receive these mercy or this mercy and help from the Lord only in emergencies? Do we receive the mercy and help from the Lord when we do things right? Do we receive mercy and help from the Lord because we're faithful and obedient? None of these are reasons for what we receive and when we receive it. We receive it every morning meaning every daybreak before some of us even arise from sleep. Nothing can stop it, hinder it, or dissolve it. This is out of the control of any human hand. No one on earth or in hell can stop the extended hand of God towards his people. Psalm 30 and 5 says, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The night, or the metaphor of night in the scripture could mean trouble, a period of trouble, a season of trouble, a time of trouble hard times, impossible situations. But morning, however, suggests light, change, hope, deliverance, and help. It is therefore not just the break of a particular day. Every morning we get it. It, Im it also implies a break of gloom, sadness, and hardship. It's not just a morning. Every morning we get it. But whatever season you're going through, whatever time I'm going through, the Lord's faithfulness is right there. It suggests a breakthrough. It suggests that darkness covered my view, but now I see the light. Why should we expect these graces every morning? Why should I hold on to this word? Why should I even believe that this is going to happen? Because of the faithfulness of God. This is not someone promising a good friend or someone that we think can help us, an institution that can help us, a system that will work for us. No, this is because of the faithfulness of God. What does the faithfulness of God mean? It means his firmness. It means security. It means stability. It means truth. It means his immutability. That means he doesn't change up on us. He's undaunted as a rock, steady as a rock. If he said it, he will make it good. Let's look at some of some scriptures that really talk about the faithfulness of God. You see, if you don't believe he's faithful, you're not going to look for the morning faithfulness. You're not going to believe that dark periods can be changed to light. You're not going to believe that difficulties and impossibilities, God can turn them into possibilities because you don't trust him. And if I don't trust him, I won't believe Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. But if I believe it, it's because of what he said about himself, and I believe what he says about himself. Psalm 36 and 5 talks about how the psalmist sees God, 
because he has done business with God. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness. O God, therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Titus 1 and 2 states, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. I hope you hear that phrase, God cannot lie. Not that he will not lie, he cannot lie. Hebrews 6 and 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope? Because he's unchangeable, because he cannot lie, because he means what he says, and he says what he means, it gives us hope. And the hope is described in verse 19 as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that which in the veil. What does that mean? That's the word of the Lord. That his ability to be true, to be steadfast, immovable, unchangeable, cause us to trust him, trust his faithfulness. Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Hold on to what we believe. Hold on to our faith in Jesus Christ. Hold on to our belief system without wavering. What we see will make us waver like the waves of the, of, of the sea moving back and forth, being tossed hither and thither. Why can I be firm? Now, I may get shaken up but I'm not being knocked completely out. Remember, I'm not totally destroyed. Why? For he is faithful that promised. It is our struggle in life. Sometimes to waver, to wander, to ponder. But we have to take hold of the fact that every morning that we wake up, it's not something that we requested. It's not something that we depend on ourselves to even ask or think that we need. He gives it to us every morning. He is faithful. So well, how can he be faithful when I've lost my loved one? How can he be faithful when I've lost my job? How can he be faithful when things are continuing? When is going to be the end of this pandemic? Things are getting worse and they're getting better. I love the Lord, but I can't see his faithfulness. Yes, you can. Because with all of that is happening, you have not really been destroyed. With all of that is happening, believers, those of you who are standing, you should not be standing. You should have given up, walked away. You should have dropped arms. You should have denounced your faith, given up on God. But even if your faith is weak, it's still there. Why? Because every morning he gave you what you needed, even if it didn't feel like it. Every morning that we wake up, not left over mercy, not mercy when we behave well, not mercy because it's an emergency in good times and in bad. When we're up and we're down, mercy meets us in every dark place. And all we have to do is believe it because it's not based on anybody's character, any circumstance, but on the character of the Lord, which says that he is 
faithful. He is immutable. He is unchangeable. He is steady as a rock. His mercy endureth forever. Now, you know, I read this article. This is a story by an unknown author, but it's in various magazines and on different websites. And it's about a man that found a cocoon of a butterfly and one day a small opening appeared and he sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through a tiny little hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. It appears as if it had gotten as far as it could and it could go no further. Just like some of us feel like I've gotten as far as I can go and I can't go any further. Don't ask me to pray. Don't ask me to sing. Don't ask me to worship. Don't ask me to get on Zoom. Don't ask me to give any tithes and offering. Just don't ask me. So the man decided, you know, th this, this butterfly needs some help. The man decided to help the butterfly. Took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily easily out of the hole but it had swollen body had swollen and gotten small and the wings shriveled up the man continued to look at the butterfly because he expected at any moment the wings would get enlarged and it would expand that would be able to support his body which would give him the ability to fly it never happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It was never able to fly. Out of the man's kindness and haste, hear me, this pandemic will push us, if you allow it, to make hasty decisions because we don't like the up and down, the in and out, the uncertainty. That's what was happening to the butterfly. He was moving up and down, up and down, up and down. And to the natural eye, to the flesh, to the person on the outside, to you, to family members, it seemed like you're going nowhere. Out of the man's kindness and did not understand that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the tiny opening were God's way of forcing the fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready to, for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. So the cocoon is a restricted place. We are in a restricted place physically, economically, we are in a restricted place socially. We are in a restricted place in terms of all the situations that we have to do. We have to wear a mask. And for some of us, that's severe restriction. We are in a restricted place. But the restricted place was the design for the butterfly's wings to develop. Every time the butterfly went up and down, looking like he's struggling, looking like he's failing, looking like he's going nowhere. Fluids were flowing into the wings and those fluids were necessary to strengthen the wings so that the butterfly could fly. But it was interrupted, you know why? Because the man took away the struggle. If God allows us to go through our lives without any obstacles, this writer said it would cripple us. We would not be strong as we could have been, and we would never fly. That's why the Bible said, all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. All of this that we're going through in the pandemic is designed to strengthen our wings so that we could fly. We're not coming out of this helpless, hopeless. 
We're not coming out of this uninformed. There's so much that we are learning about ourselves. There's so much we're learning about God. There's so much we're learning about each other. There's so much we're learning about our nation. There's so much we're learning about the reality of how we live. We're gathering information so that when we get out of this, we will fly differently. We will worship differently. We will live with each other differently. We will spend our money differently. We will spend our time with people differently. We will appreciate God and the church differently. Because every morning, he gives us his faithfulness which is really fueling us so that we can fly. We're not without help. God is just preparing us to become stronger in our faith and stronger in our character. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for every listener, whether believer or unbeliever. I'm asking you, God, to take this word and lift their hearts. Help them to know that this pandemic, personal pandemic, national pandemic, whatever level it has affected us, we know that it is strengthening us. You haven't abandoned us, Lord. You didn't forsake us, even if it feels like it. Because every morning you show up with fresh help fresh mercy. Every morning you show up with your favor and your kindness. And every morning we're getting stronger so that our wings, our wings of faith, our wings of hope, our wings of truth, our wings of courage, our wings of confidence, they're being developed so that when we come out of this, we can fly. We can accomplish all the things that you have called us to do. Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace and thank you for your long suffering and thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God, that whatever you have done for us in the past, you're doing for us right now because great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen.